Hey, if you spend any time at all in the Proxmox community, in the forums, on Reddit, you've definitely seen the question we're going to tackle today. It honestly pops up constantly. And it's a great question, right? Because let's be honest, on the surface, it sounds like the absolute perfect modern solution to an age-old problem. It just seems so clean, so elegant. But is it really? Okay, let's break down the appeal here because it is strong. The promise of using cloud object storage like S3 is just so good. We're talking storage costs that are ridiculously low. It's infinitely scalable, which means you never have to worry about buying another hard drive. Your data is off-site from day one, which is a huge win for disaster recovery. Plus, it's secure, it's durable, and hey, Proxmox backup server officially supports it. It feels like a total slam dunk. But, and you knew there was a but coming, the reality of how Proxmox backup server is designed, how it works under the hood, reveals a fundamental deep-seated conflict with this whole approach. It really is like trying to hammer a square peg into a round hole. So, let's get right into the core of the issue. This all comes down to a fundamental mismatch in design philosophy. It's about what the backup software expects versus what the storage system actually provides. To really get this, you have to understand what makes Proxmox Backup Server, or PBS as we'll call it, so incredibly efficient. It's built around something called chunking. It takes every backup, slices it into thousands of tiny reusable pieces. This is amazing for deduplication, saving you a ton of space. But here's the key. It means the server is constantly reading and writing thousands of tiny little files. And this is where that conflict becomes crystal clear. Look at this. PBS expects storage that acts like a fast, local disk. It needs to grab those thousands of tiny chunks instantly. But S3, it's a completely different beast. It's an API-driven system. Every single operation, every read or write is a command sent over the internet. It's built for durability and massive scale, not for that kind of rapid fire, random access. So this is the crucial point. The thing you have to remember, S3 isn't a file system, it's an API. And that means every single time PBS needs to read or write one of its thousands of chunks, it's making a network request with all the overhead that comes with it. This adds up, and boy, does it add up fast. Now, this technical mismatch isn't just some academic problem. It leads to very real and often very painful practical problems. And the first one usually hits you right in the wallet. And this is a lesson so many people have learned the hard way. You see, the price to store your data on S3 is only one part of the story. The other, often hidden part, is the cost of getting your data back out. And you usually only discover that cost when you're in the middle of a full-blown crisis. This chart just says it all. That little bar on the left? That's your predictable low monthly storage bill. You love to see it. But that giant bar right next to it? That's the potential egress fee when a server dies and you suddenly need to pull terabytes of data back down. Your restore might work, but it could come with an absolutely eye-watering bill you never, ever saw coming. So the natural next thought is, okay, well, I'll just use the super cheap archive tiers like Glacier. The problem is, those services are designed for delayed retrieval. We're talking hours, sometimes even days to get your files. Proxmox backup servers simply cannot function like that. It needs immediate access to its data for all sorts of background tasks. It's a non-starter. Okay, so let's move on from cost to performance because this builds into another huge issue and we call this the latency trap. You know, a lot of people assume that a fast internet connection just solves this whole problem. You think, I've got a gigabit pipe, I'll be fine. But in practice, for this specific use case, your total internet speed is rarely the actual bottleneck. The real performance killer is something much sneakier. It is truly death by a thousand cuts. Even if each tiny API call only has a small delay of a few milliseconds, when PBS needs to make tens of thousands of those calls just to piece together one backup for a restore or verification, those milliseconds add up. They add up into minutes, and minutes can add up into hours. The result is backups that crawl and restores that feel completely broken, no matter how fast your internet is. Now, to be fair, the Proxmox team is well aware of this, and they're working on it. Newer versions of PBS have things like a local cache, which tries to absorb all those writes locally and then slowly send them to S3 in the background. But these features are still pretty new, and honestly, debugging a backup chain that's split between a local cache and a remote object store can get really complicated really fast if something goes wrong. So, if backing up directly to S3 is filled with all these issues, what's the right way to do it? Let's look at the path that consistently proves to be more reliable, the one that the pros use. 
the solution that most experienced users come back to is this two-stage process. First, you run a primary Proxmox backup server on-site, in your building, on a machine with fast local storage, like SSDs. This is where your backups run, and they run quickly. Then, you use PBS's fantastic built-in sync feature to replicate that entire data store to a second off-site PBS instance. And this approach just plain works. Your main backups and, most importantly, your restores are lightning fast because they're local. There are no surprise egress fees for your day-to-day -day operations, and during a real disaster, the system behaves exactly how you expect it to. It's a boring setup, and trust me, that's exactly what you want from your backups. You want reliability, not novelty. So to wrap all of this up, this isn't about saying S3 is bad, not at all. It's about using the right tool for the right job. Let's be really clear here. S3 is an incredible technology. It's amazing for what it was designed to do. Store massive amounts of data durably and make it available anywhere. It's just, it's not designed to be the fast file system-like backend that Proxmox backup server was built from the ground up to expect. And while you might be tempted by cheaper S3 compatible providers that don't have those egress fees like Backblaze B2 or Cloudflare R2, just remember this. While they absolutely solve the cost problem, they do not solve the core technical problem. Latency is still latency. The fundamental design mismatch is still there. And this really leaves us with the most important takeaway. When it comes to something as critical as your backups, chasing the newest cloud-native solution can introduce hidden complexities you never expected. So the final question you should ask yourself is this. When everything has gone completely wrong, do you want a setup that's clever or one that's boringly predictable?